I want to talk with everybody here tonight. I don't want to talk to you as a group. I want to talk to you as an individual. And my subject is, the decision is yours. The decision is yours. A bad mistake does not have to be fatal. A bad mistake does not have to be fatal. And for a text, I want to turn to a very familiar passage recorded in our Lord's Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. And you'll know immediately this has to do with the prodigal son. I just want to read a few verses here beginning with verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. Now the decision is yours. A bad mistake does not have to be fatal. In talking with uh, some people about their souls and in telling them that Jesus is ready to save them, that they will just come to him. And I get the comments and statements like this. Well, I would accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, and I would accept membership in the church, but there are just so many hypocrites in the church. Have you ever heard that? And I tell them that I'm aware that everyone who has his or her name on the roll is not a Christian. The same as everything that lives in the water is not a fish, but every fish will live in the water. The moment the fish finds himself out of the water, he's fluttering with all of his might trying to get back in the water because he knows he cannot long live out of the water. If you allow a hypocrite to stand between you and the Lord, if you try to hide behind him, you've got to be smaller than that hypocrite. If a hypocrite can stand between you and the Lord, that hypocrite is closer to the Lord than you are. Don't you know if I have cancer, I'm not going to be cured by going around taking the names of who else has it. That isn't going to do me one bit of good. The decision is yours. I've already said this week that no one can save you but Jesus. And no one can keep you from being saved but you. Now, this, as you know, is what is commonly called the parable of the prodigal son. And this is the greatest short story in or out of the Bible. It touches the tender chords of human heart. It is a picture of the depths to which the soul can descend in its flight away from the Father who wants to bless you. It reveals the hope that exists for any individual, even though he has gone away from the Father into a far country. It reveals the deceitfulness of sin and the godless toe and the expensive toe uh, that the godless life will take on every area of our existence. Now, this young man is a symbol of society. As you know, society consists of individuals. 
And society is what each individual makes. Now every person is a prodigal without Christ. And anywhere can be the far country. You don't have to fly to France to be in a far country. You can sit right here and tune out the Holy Spirit in you in a far country. The person who's always talking about I'm sick of home needs to be reminded that there's going to come a time when he's going to be homesick. The moral order says right is right and wrong is wrong and you can't do wrong and feel right about it. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. Sin destroys love, life and laughter. Sin hangs a crepe on the door of happiness. Sin will cause grief to grip your heart and it will cause adversity to rattle the windows of your soul. But now when this boy gets lost, nobody goes to look for him. He had to come to himself. Now let's see, why was he lost? Well, he went and made a fatal demand. He went to his father and told his father he was very courteous about it. He could have waited until the old man went to sleep and he could have bumped him off, but no. He went to his father courteously and he said, Father, give me the potion of goods that falleth to me. I want, you know, he was a consumer and not a producer. And you'll notice People who are consumers and not producers, they can make demands. The fellow who isn't producing anything can always get a picket sign and walk and talk about our demand. And did you notice when they go to demanding, they want it now. The boy said, give me the potion of goods that fall to me. I want it now. I know I'm going to get it when you're gone. But I don't want to wait that long. I want it now. I want to go leave here. I want to move away from uh, this parental authority. I want to move away and be my own man. I don't want to be fenced in. I, I want to go out there and live life to my satisfaction. Give me the potion that good that fall to me. And as any good father will, this father, I dare say, tried to reason with that boy, but when he could no longer reason with him, and you know some of us, you just can't reason. I dare say there's somebody right here. Your parents tried to get you to go on to school, but no, you want to get married. You quiet, but I know what I'm talking about. Your parents tried to steer you in the right direction, but no, you would have no part of it. You wanted to do your own thing your way. When the poor father couldn't reason with the son, then he divided the goods between both boys. And I believe that before this boy took his leave of home, the father gave a farewell party. And before the party broke up, I believe he stated the purpose of that party. My youngest son has demanded his portion of the goods. I've given them to him. He's gathered them together. Tomorrow morning, he's leaving home. In subsequent days, I just want you to know what has happened. I believe that the men at the party patted him on the back and wished him well. Women promised to pray for him. There were two people who didn't sleep too well that night. And any father and any mother here will know who those two people were. The next morning early, a tender scene took place at the gate. There the father is giving the boy the final word of counsel. When you get where you're going, 
I want you to spend your money wisely and save some. Watch out for the crowd with which you run. And every time I read this, I wonder about this boy's mother. No doubt she was standing there weeping. She pressed an Old Testament in his hand and told him to read it regularly and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But nothing they could do or say would dissuade the boy. Even though happy memories trooped down the hall of recollection, but that did not deter him. He took his journey, and that journey stretched into days and stretched into weeks. And I don't know where he went, but he went so far away from home uh, that nobody would know him and would be sending reports back home as to how he's getting along. He went away from home, went so far that the old folk wouldn't be coming up to spend a weekend with him. He went away from home. You know, sin places distance between man and God. Sin sponsors every trip away from God. This young man went away, and when he got where he was going, the Bible says he wasted his substance in riotous living. Now, you don't have to be a high school graduate to know how to waste. You just let it keep going out, nothing coming in, and after a while, you're going to be in want. Want always follows waste. This boy wasted his property, he wasted his health, he wasted his good name, he wasted his influence, he wasted his time, he wasted his talent, he wasted his future, he wasted his usefulness, and then he wasted the faith that the parents had in him, and then the Bible says, and when he had spent all, a famine rose in the land. Isn't it strange that a famine won't rise until you spend it all? You turn to friends and ask them to help you, and they'll say, well, give me two or three days and I'll see what I can do for you. They're trying to get you off the line. You're possibly not going to get in touch with them anymore until they figure you got that problem worked out. When you have spent all, nobody wants to minister. But the Bible says that this boy went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And I can see him determining in his heart that I'll not go back home. I'll make it out here. I'd rather stay out here where I am than to go back home. I will go and get me a job, and that's good. I can see him walking from farm to farm and from factory to factory. I can see him walking from door to door, but nobody would hide. Then when the Bible says he joined himself to a citizen of that country, that means he lacked stone. He glued himself to that citizen. He stayed around in the way. He pestered. He worried uh, that citizen until finally that citizen reasoned, well, he's here on my hand, I might as well give him something to do. I can't get rid of him. And he tells the boy, go out into the field and take care of my swine. And that boy jumped at the chance. Who ever heard of a Jewish boy slopping hogs? But he said to himself, I'd rather, I'd rather take care of the hogs than to go back home. While they're taking care of the hogs, Sitting there, I can see him, sitting there on uh, the fence, watching the hogs eat. And you know, if you're not hungry, it'll make you hungry just to watch hogs eat. They go at it so enthusiastically, and, and they can make it sound so good. And, and while he was sitting there watching the hogs eat, that boy came to himself. And every individual ought to come to yourself. That boy began to reason with himself. He began to talk with himself. You know, in our day, they say when you talk to yourself, uh, that's a sign of insanity. But let me tell you, you've got good sense when you talk to yourself. Talk to yourself, but be honest with yourself. 
that boy reasoned with himself. He came to himself. Now the pastor of the Baptist church <laughs> didn't go to him. This boy came to himself. It wasn't the missionary group or the prayer band. This boy came to himself. He reasoned with himself. He said, now, how many hearts, sir, of my fathers have plenty and to spare? And I perish with them. It doesn't make sense. For me to be sitting out here, dying of starvation, when I could be at home at a welcome table. It doesn't make sense for me to be out here sick and lonely when I could be at home enjoying the fellowship of the family. It doesn't make sense for me to be in these rags when I can be at home with a good father who will provide for me. It doesn't make sense for me to be here with pig pin mud between my toes when I can be walking on thick carpet. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise and I'm going to my father and when I get there, I'm not going back talking about the raggedy preachers and the crooked deacon. I'm going to tell him I've said. I'm not going back talking about the hypocrites in the church. I'm going to tell him I have sinned. I'm not going back talking about this one and how this one lives and the other. I have sinned. And what I like about it, this boy wasn't just talking. He rose up, the Bible says, he arose and came to his father. He got up just like he was. He didn't wait until he felt better. He came just as he was. This boy came to his father, and all while he was gone, the father was looking and longing and praying and hoping that this boy would come to himself. I can see him now sitting on the end of the porch just about sundown, and he saw a farm silhouetted against the setting sun, and he, I can see him shading his eyes. And when he recognized that that's my boy, he jumped off of that porch. He forgot about his age. He forgot about his arthritis. He jumped off that porch and ran out to meet the boy. And when he met him, the boy began to make his speech. All I have seen, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. The father smothered out his speech with hugs and kisses. And about that time, the servants came running to see what all of the commotion was about. The father said, go servant and get a robe and put on my son. He's got no business in these rags. Go and get shoes and put on his feet. Got no business being bad for it. Go and get a ring and put on his finger. And that will let him know that he's been restored to the fellowship of the family. Go servant and kill the fatted calf. And let's make merry. You notice he didn't say, go and kill a hog and we'll have a ham dinner. That would have reminded the boy of his past. What I like about it, when the Lord forgives you, he doesn't bring it up anymore. I'm so glad that the Lord doesn't hold my past against me. I'm so glad that he has blotted it out. I'm so glad. Can you tell me how you feel since you've been forgiven? Oh, there's rejoicing in my heart because I know that the Lord has forgiven me of my sins. And I want to tell you, whatever, whatever mistake you made, the loving Father is waiting to forgive you if you'll just come back to it. Oh, yes, if you'll confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't you know they had a joyous time? Everybody was happy to see that boy come back home with his older brother. And he's always, the older brother's always around. Somebody is going to make fun of you when you come back. Somebody's going to criticize you. But never mind that. Thank God I'm at home 
I am saved. I'm forgiven of my sin. They've been blotted out. There'll be rejoicing here tonight. Oh, yes. If you just rise, that person who has strayed away, what I like about the Lord, even though you've gone contrary to his will, messed up your life, and then if you come back to him, he will receive you. I know he will. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Oh, if you just come back to him, those, those who are out there and not being useful in the kingdom of our Lord, if you're out of circulation and can't be used, if I were you, I'd rise up tonight and come on back to the Father. Well, if you've broken fellowship with the Father and the family, if there's somebody that you just can't stand, possibly you sit on the same pew with them, Oh, but if I were you, I'd come to the Lord tonight and let him, let him forgive me my sins and then restore me to the family. I, if I were you, I would not wait. I wouldn't wait for a more convenient season. I wouldn't wait until the crowd got smaller. I'd come on now. If you are ashamed on him, before men, he will not acknowledge you before his father. I'd come on now. Don't wait. Don't even wait till Sunday morning. You don't have any guarantee that you'll be here Sunday morning. I'd do it now. We're hung up between the no longer and the not yet. What has been is no longer, and what is to be has not come yet. All we have is now. That's all that you can count on. So rise up now and come on to him. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. I wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home. I wasted many precious years. Now I'm coming home. I now repent with bitter tears. Lord, I'm coming home. My soul is sick. My heart is sore. Now I'm coming home. My strength renew, my hope restore. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home, never motor roam. I'm not going to wait, but I'm going to come just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come, I come. Will you come to him tonight? You will return to him. He will return to you. And there will be rejoicing in your own life. There will be rejoicing in the church. There will even be rejoicing in heaven.